Okay, so thank you everyone and everyone watching the recording. I hope this presentation on acrobatics will be extremely helpful to you in teaching coaches how to code acrobatics. Um, if anyone wants to turn their camera on, that's great. Maybe when we get started on the presentation, when you'll be participating. So be prepared to write in the chat and get involved and participate. If you have a minute now as we get started, if you have the acrobatics um, quick reference sheets, those would be extraordinarily helpful for you during this session. So you can grab those as I get started because today I'm gonna have some little video clips and I'm gonna put you to work with trying to code some acrobatics. So I will pull up my presentation. Yeah, and hopefully you can all see that. And I will share this presentation after. Okay, FINA is okay, or World Aquatics, not new branding yet, but uh, we'll have um, this presentation for you to reshare. So my goal is that I am going to teach you, and then you are going to help us teach others. So this is a FINA presentation, but for World Aquatics, it's gonna take me a while to get used to this. Same with synchro and artistic swimming. We're all gonna to have to, it's gonna slips off the tongue so easily, but this will be PDF for you um, so that you can help, help me help the coaches in declaring acro on the coach card. All righty, so let's get started. So first off, I'm going to go through your main resources that you will need. Because as you know from my presentation on Monday, it's key to get all your toolkit together before you start. So I'm going to let you know what you need in your acrobatics toolkit. So our acro resources are all off of the link in the header there, and you'll be able to link right off of this in the PDF. That's why I've made sure this is a super, super helpful document for you all. And on the rules page, you will find the catalog as well as the quick reference sheets, which essentially compress the catalog into 17 pages for you of the main um, movements you need to know for coding. There's also the pair acrobatics quick reference sheets. This is a simple two pages. So if you have the quick reference sheets printed out and with you, then you can just refer back to the catalog. You do not need to print out the whole entire catalog. You can if you want to. It is big though. It's about 200 pages. But that is why we created the quick reference or quick check sheets so that coaches have something easy to use. And on the technical controller side, we also use these as well. A little bit about our catalog, this beautiful document that Anastasia is really the architect of, Anastasia Petrenko. So I've kind of broken down the section. So when you're telling people about the catalog and helping me out, you can direct them to what are the important parts to read. I'm not gonna open the catalog today and go into all of that. I think Anastasia does over in her videos um, over on the FINA learning platform. The first part of the catalog is general theory. I'd recommend reading those. They give you some of the knowledge in the background on how difficulty is built in acrobatics. I'm not going through that today. This is homework for you to kind of go through the catalog. Page 12 has important notes. This is important for you to read coaches. It gives you some main principles about your acrobatics and a little bit about declaring. Nice pictures on this page as well to help guide you. And then the next large portion is dedicated to each of the groups. This is where the quick reference sheets are built from. So as you can see from pages 13 to 78, I've condensed into those quick reference sheets. 
So it's really the expanded tables explaining all the constructions, explaining all of the positions, how their values are calculated. Um, that is what the quick reference sheets are condensed to be. But you can definitely scroll through those pages, get yourself a custom. Then the big main part of the catalog from pages 79 to 162 are truly the catalog. They're all your options. They're all the beautiful diagrams of what you can choose from. Anastasia likes to call it your menu. It is your menu of acrobatics. All the different completed codes and pictures that you can just say, yes, I wanna do that one. Um, as someone from North America, this reminds me of the Sears catalog and doing your shopping and, oh yes, I would like that bathing suit and that mixer or whatever else. So that is what the catalog is. It is it's your shopping for your acrobatics. They're already pre-built for you with a code. So if you just want to choose something in the catalog, it's already there for you with a code to use. So that is where a large portion of the catalog, I believe Anastasia said there's five to 600 different acrobatics in there for you as coaches to use. After that are some summary tables. You don't really need to worry about those. It's kind of just organization and a check that we've got our numbers correct, but everything's very transparent in the catalog as to how all the values are built. Page 183 just has a key to some of the codes. Essentially, it's a glossary of some of the codes. Pages 184 to 194 are the expanded table from Pair Acrobatics. So again, 10 pages there that we've condensed into two for you um, in the quick reference sheets. But again, if something doesn't seem clear in the quick reference, always go back to the catalog to get the full explanation. And then the very last few pages of the catalog is about pair assisted actions, which are transitions. So these are not acrobatics, but it's just for your information. If you'd like to get some ideas, uh, if you'd like to see what that means. So pair assisted actions are, are part of um, the very end of the catalog for information purposes. All right, any questions on that? Everyone good? You can always write me in the chat um, if you can't turn on your mic. That is all right. All right, we will continue. So the quick reference sheets, these are really super helpful. They summarize groups A, B, C, and P in an easy to find format, and it is completely aligned with the catalog. But whenever you are in doubt, please go back to the catalog if you'd like more details. I've also made sure you can kind of see in teeny tiny, but if you also have them with you, each of the numbers in the quick reference correspond to the catalog. So I'm looking here at group A. Number one here in construction is throw from surface. Well, that's number one over in the catalog. Everything is numbered to be precise to the catalog. It's just condensed pictures and information so you can move faster and not have to go through so many pages in the catalog. So please, please use this. I highly recommend they are printed out. Um, whenever I do my live sessions, like in in-person, not just on Zoom, I have, I don't know that anyone can see, I have a big binder. I have everything in there, you know, in my sheets, and hybrid tables I talked about yesterday, but all my quick reference. Um, I know we're a very digitized community now, and that's great. We're saving a lot of paper, but there's still some things I highly recommend be printed out and with you because you will use them all the time, coaches, or you have them at the pool with the music system so your whole club can get access to them, such as that. Then next up, we have our pair acrobatics. It's just two sheets, which is great. And um, as well within the catalog is a nice little summary of what all the letters and codes mean. It's quite simple compared to actually the team acrobatics. An L is a lift, a J is a jump, a W is a throw, um, and all the little parts of 
a pair acrobatic code. So right now, this is it. This is what we have for pair acrobatics. Hopefully, it encompasses the majority of pair acrobatics that are being done. That was Anastasia's intention. It may be the case you do something um, slightly different, but you know the chart may expand eventually, or Anastasia may simplify at some point to uh, make a certain movement like encompass a little bit more. She doesn't want it to be too um, stringent. She wants to give you the flexibility of movement when, once it's in a main category there. But as you know, with this new system, we're going to learn and grow over the course of this first season. Um, you won't see any changes, you know, right now, but, you know, there'll be a point at which we can make some clarifications that are, is an appropriate time. We know coaches have been working so hard to learn and get up to speed. We don't want to throw any more changes uh, into the mix at the moment. Okay, off we go. So a few basic slides here just on acrobatics. This may be repetition, but that's okay. So an acrobatic movement, this is pretty much our manual or rules definition, our term for jumps, throws, lifts, stacks, platforms. We know it's an integral part of this amazing sport, so much so that this routine is now going to be at the Olympic Games. That's how important our acrobatics are. And why? Because they are spectacular gymnastic feats and risky actions, balancing or in combination, and of course, it's a team effort when we do um, our amazing acrobatic movements. They are considered as an element starting from four swimmers and more. So three base and a featured swimmer. Everything else is considered either as pair acrobatics or pair assisted actions. So for coaches, the rationale behind this is we want to allow you in teams. I'm going to speak to teams here to do innovative, cool movements with two to three people total that don't take away from you counting it as an acrobatic. It will be considered as a transition. But once you put something together with four people, it is considered an acrobatic. Okay, so that's the important thing to take away. You know, so that we're giving coaches still that creative flexibility to do, you know, some cool pair acros, and then maybe you assemble again, and then you do a full team acrobatic. Those things you do with two or three people are transition. You're adding to that artistic impression score with those movements. Okay. If you have any questions on that, let me know. We do want to make sure that's clear, but this is also stated in Appendix 3, um, as well as in the catalog, that four as soon as you're at four swimmers, you're in acrobatic territory with those movements, okay? Here is our little classification chart of acrobatic movements. This is right out of the catalog, just um, fancied up a little bit with some colors. So group A is airborne, and we have jumps and throws. Group B is balance. It is lifts and stacks. Group C is combined. This is a bit more complex movements. And we'll talk about what through, onto, and other mean. And then we have our group P platforms, which are standard platforms and our floats. All right, so we're going to go through each. A group A, acrobatic. A stands for airborne, and that is key for this. So all elements in this group are performed by a feature swimmer or a flyer in the air. So once you see that someone has gone airborne or you're trying to get someone airborne, that's a group A acrobatic. All right, and I'll play just a couple of quick videos. So there is, you can see that swimmer was airborne very clearly. And there's one more here. Some of these will definitely look familiar to you. That is, yeah, a nice, very clearly in the air. And we have one last one. Ooh. Yeah, very clearly airborne. So those, that is what group A is. They are also the easiest to code. I love group A. Group A is my favorite. 
<laughs> All right, group B stands for balance, and this is for a stack or a lift. Okay, a stack is the sit or stand or lays on support athletes, which are in a vertical body position, head up or head down. And then a lift is when a featured swimmer sits, stands, or lays on base athletes. The one other thing that is clear for um, group B acrobatics is that they always come up together and then go down together. There isn't like a detachment. Okay, it goes up. And you can imagine that in a stack, it goes up or comes down. And when it's a lift, it comes up and then it goes down. All right, and let's look at a couple examples or a few. Here's a stack, clearly goes up and then comes down. This one comes up and then goes down. So comes up, there's a bit of a change and goes down. Okay, and one more. Okay, so that is how you know you're in group B. There is balance and it goes up and goes down. C stands for combined. I also like to say, I feel like I tell this joke every time, it also stands for complicated. <laughs> This one is more the complicated category. And that is because it encompasses characteristics from group A and B. So how you know you're in group C territory is that there are two formations. And those two formations come together for an acrobatic. And of course, coaches, you know, I mean, this isn't surprising. It needs to be well synchronized for it to work usually because it is in combination. And usually a featured swimmer is transferring from one to the other, from one formation to the other formation. Okay, so let's take a look at a little more. So we have here three categories. So in group C, we have the onto the support. So the featured swimmer usually jumps from one onto another and then remains on until it submerges. There's a nice picture there at the top, you know, the jump and kind of land on a stack. So there you can see it's like an airborne to a balance happens and then goes under. That's kind of a classic example. Through the support, the featured swimmer jumps from one and passes through the other formation, kind of a slight touch, and then continues moving. So we have an example of that below. So it's a group, you know, you can see it's like a group A, they've jumped off that formation on the right. There's a stack's gone up, but instead of landing, like the one on the top, I'm pretending I'm the support swimmer. And then I just kind of flick that person through. They're gonna kind of pass through me. I'm giving them some extra momentum to keep going and flip behind me. That is an example of a through, a combined through. Other, and when you look through the catalog, kind of is anything outside of onto or through. So that's kind of the snake, I believe, is a um, other type example. The one where they're connected, it goes up and they whoop, go like that. Um, so you can look through the catalog to find um, those examples. All right, let's do a couple examples. So here is an onto. I'm going to have a jump on and here is a through example. Okay. So they went through a formation and notice they let go. So instead of it being someone right side up or head up kind of passing over them, it was feet and that's all right too. Could be the feet. It could be the hands. I'll play that one more time, but they went through the construction. So from one formation to another. And even though, so you can see the hand is already touching there, that's okay. 
there's two separate formations going on, one that was getting them up and then one that was obviously holding the stack on the other side. All right, on to group P. So group P, it stands for platform. And we're talking about either the group, um, you know, a platform, a standard platform with your base swimmer and someone on top, and then everyone else holding the base. That's pretty much our classic platform. And then a float is the geometric figure where a swimmer is on top of the float. All right, we have a couple examples here. Very classic platform with traveling. And this also is a platform, but with a rotation, we don't have a video of a float at the moment. So pretty classic platforms. Platforms are pretty good to code to. They're not too bad. I don't mind those. So now we're going to get into how to build and read an acro code. So we know what our four groups now are. Coaches, you're strategizing on which ones you're going to include in your routine. But now we need to teach you how to code it. So the acrobatic algorithm is this formula right here. It is construction plus direction plus positions plus area of support plus rotation of construction base plus plane and degree of rotation plus your bonus equals your DD. And with this, it's noted as well in the catalog and here for you, which groups include certain elements in which do not. So direction is only counted in groups A and C. Area of support is B and P only. Rotation of the construction base are everything but A. Who knows in the future, maybe group A will start to rotate as they fling someone off the top. That could get interesting, but it could happen. Plane and degree of rotation are your twists and somersaults. So that is only in A and C and every single group has a bonus. I'd also like to note, just as I'm speaking to bonus right here, in the catalog, Anastasia's done an amazing job of having lots of photos of what each bonus means. So in the quick reference sheets, bonuses are outlined, like they're numbered in words, but there wasn't room to include all the pictures, obviously, or it would have been many more pages. So if you don't know what a bonus means with the words, Go back to the catalog and look at the photo that's been included next to it. All right. Okay, let's start looking. Okay, we're gonna look at each group. So I've up at the top, you'll see the header in gray, the Acro A code order. If you do have your quick reference sheets in front of you, you'll notice this is at the top of each section. That is where I have cut and pasted this from. It already exists in your documents, this part right here, acro A order. So the first, whoops, sorry. The first part is your group or subgroup. So if you wanna follow along, we're gonna go through each of the three pictures that I've taken from the catalog as examples. So we're looking at number 15 first. So we can see that AJ is our group or subgroup. So it is an airborne jump. The next part of the code is construction. And the code is SQ. So that means square. It is jump from square. The next part of the code is direction. Well, that's what back means. It's going backwards. Next part of the code is position. Now in positions, you can declare up to two. But in this first, Acro number 15, there is just one position, and that is tuck, T K. And then next is rotation. So in number 15, it is one somersault, somersault 360. So an S1. 
And that is the end of this code. There is no bonus here. And if you're using your quick reference, you'll be able to use that to see, and we'll be doing this in a few minutes, on how you get the 1.85 difficulty. But all of your coding letters, your SQ, your back, your TK, your S1, that all correlates to a value that you will find in the quick reference sheet that will add you up to 1.85. And that's what we're going to work on in an exercise in a little bit. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. I'll move a little quicker. So this one is an airborne jump. It is a jump from shoulders. Shoulders when it's a good big group of six to eight. It is going forwards. This one has two positions. So it's a pike, PK. There's a slash in it, backslash. Second position is a kite. That's what the 2TK stands for. So that's for this position. After you see the pike, kind of the straddle. And then it's, and that using all the coding would add up to 1.6. And then I put one in that is a little bit longer. So let's look at the last one, number 169. Now we've got an AW, that's an airborne throw. The construction is a triple because it has three people underneath. It is going upwards, so up. The position is a tuck. So we don't count that first takeoff position as we don't over here in the first one. It's a T1, that means it's a twist head up. And then this one has the U14 bonus, which is a jump from split, head up split position. So here's an example of one pretty much that has everything in it. The construction, direction, position, rotation, and bonus. So that is how you read a code. And the easiest practice is exactly this. Go look in the catalog. And essentially, it's like, it's almost, it's a new language. You just need to learn to translate and kind of work through. So use this kind of as a practice. We'll do the same thing for group B. We have our group B order up top. So it's your group, your construction, then it has type of connection. So not direction in this one, but type of connection, our positions, rotation of the base. So instead of rotation like um, twists and somersaults, we've got rotation of the base or rotation of the construction, and then always bonus at the end. So here on number three, we've got a group B stack. That's what the BS stands for. It is a stack happening, which we can see one person on top of the other. The type of connection is FS. That stands for foot on shoulders. And all of this is in your quick reference. It's in the catalog and it's in your quick reference. The position is a line. Just someone standing straight up. That's one of the easiest positions you can learn. And it's an R1 asterisk rotation. And that means that construction's rotating a 360. We'll move over to uh, an example of a lift, a very simple lift. So this is a group B lift, a BL. The construction is L. That means it's just a lift, a simple lift. LI is the type of connection. And again, that is simple lift. Very, very straightforward here. And the position is a line. It's just a, you may see this one for your beginner swimmers, one of the basic things they learn how to do. So there is um, a basic lift. And let's go into one a bit more complicated. I think we saw this in the video examples, very close to it. So we have, again, a group B stack. The construction is STH, and that stands for a stack head down. The connection is a sit on a V. Again, all these codes are right in the quick reference. And then the position is a split. And in group B, the position code has that SPL 
You may see split in group A and it's just SP. Over in group B, it, it says SPL. Okay, and there is group B. Okay, group C, the one that stresses me out a little bit, but we'll get there. I need to learn too continuously on this. So group C, its group is this first one, number seven, is a group C through. We can see that this swimmer, all right, they're kind of going through the construction. So the construction code now, before I get ahead of myself, is this apostrophe and then the P in there. So this part here, and I actually have to look this up. It is through to do very quickly i even need to look at my quick reference sometimes for some of these it is a through platform plus spotter thrower okay so we can see if you see this little person in blue is actually being the platform it is going forward it has two positions so it has the split and the arch and then it is a hand spring through it Next one is a CC. This one is uh, on to support. The construction is a simple lift with spotter. So this featured swimmer is being pushed off one formation to stand on another. It is going forward and the position is a line. Here's the example I was talking about. So here is an other. So I did one of each on this slide, a through, an onto, and an other. So it's a group C other. The construction is snake stack head down. It is going backwards. You can see that the person who is yellow, the whole thing goes backwards. The position is bamboo. So this is this, um, it's when you're head down, like handstand position is named bamboo. And then the second position is an arch. The rotation in this case is a dive. It's a parabola. So it is a dive. Okay, I will fully admit group C is complicated. It will take a little more time to invest, to read the acrobatics, read the code order and get used to it. It's not something that comes quite as easy as group A's and group B's. And lastly, our lovely group P's. I feel like group P's are like my childhood in artistic swimming. <laughs> Lots of platforms back in the day. All right, so here is our classic. It's a standard platform. Next is the construction. So that is the P, which stands for platform. Pretty simple here, straight body. F2A is the type of connection. So it is feet on two arms. You can see that the base is holding the two feet. Position is easy now. Line, line, it's one of the easiest ones to remember. And this one has a rotation of the base, an R1. It is rotating a 360. That's what it's telling us here on this code. Get a little more complex, a little bit harder, but we still have this standard platform. The connection is this 3PA. So it's three points with arms. So you can see there's um, two hands on each leg and then another connection. So there's three points, it's connected. And the position is a knight. So that is the KN. Included also a float. So we can see this is a group P float, PF. The construction is a rhombus. The type of connection is this BR1A2. So it is a bridge, okay? A bridge, palms, foot on two straight bodies. This one is number 39 in the quick reference sheets in your group P, but you will find this exactly there. The position is T-O, and I believe that is um, a tower. 
oh, I was just looking for it. That one's not as common, a tower. And then it's a J7 bonus. And if I look in my, I'm flipping through my quick reference myself. Um, this one says it's a spider action. So this one, um, it is this action has some flexibility risk. So we can't see that from a static photo, but that is what is going to happen on that one from the catalog. Any questions on these? I know, honestly, I'm kind of guiding you through the way I learned, to be honest with you. In working with Anastasia, in trying to figure out acro, it does take a little bit of time, but your best bet is is deconstructing the, the acrobatic yourself. It's kind of like taking out all the parts so you know how to put the parts back together. Use the code order, use the quick reference sheets, and just look at different acrobatics in the code catalog and see if you can find everything. And then you understand how to put it all together. It is a process, but um, I'm trying to take everything out of my head and my learning and give it to you and pass it along to you to help share with other people of how to break it down. To me, it's no different than breaking down a really long figure, right? That's what we do as coaches, right? We break out the figure into all the little parts, all the little values of transitions. It's, this is the same for acrobatics. Just think of it um, almost like, again, I use this term for over in hybrids, but it's like your acrobatic storyboard. You're adding together all these different ingredients to come up with your acrobatic. It's very systematic. I think we all have very systematic heads in this sport and we see things in, but try and do it in little parts to put it together. And to help us with this, we have our acrobatic checking form. This form looks really scary as a one pager. So that is why I'm going to show you what it looks like. And we're going to work with it just in one part. Over on the right-hand side here, I've, I'm showing you where it is on the learning platform. So it's on the coaches page on the learning platform, and it's right down here under the fillable coach card template. Look for acrobatic coaching tool, fillable PDF. This is this document. This is not something that's a required submission for you at a competition. This is essentially a coach worksheet for you to use. Um, and to help build your acrobatics, save them, save your code so you're not always starting from scratch. And then maybe you decide to change your positions so you can take something out and put something new in. And make this your own. Maybe you want to make this into an awesome Excel spreadsheet. Go for it. Make it work for you. Okay. So here it is just in one section. The one above I'm sure you can tell it has seven acrobatics listed because you need seven for your acro routine. There is never going to be more than seven acrobatics in an entire routine. So it has seven spots for you. Um, answer a question. I few minutes if you absolutely it is brand new one it is a position that is not in the catalog it is a construction that is absolutely absolutely not new in the catalog there'll be an 